Beast here. Today I'm going to be doing a draw of my life and share with you my ridiculous, crazy experience on how I became the LA Beast. I like hot dogs. I was born Kevin Thomas Australia in January 1984 on a cold winter's day when a giant freaking bird guy delivered me in a little blanket to a small town called Ridgewood in the armpit of America, also known as New Jersey. I grew up in the suburbs of a small, quiet little town to loving parents who were still together. Uh, my dad worked for Pepsi, my mother was a school teacher, and I had three sisters. I always thought I should have a brother and that I got screwed, but I knew at an early age that I hated authority. I couldn't stay put in one place for too long and that I was a big pain in the ass to my mother. I used to break out of my car seat at age one while she was driving and freaked the shit out of her. At age two, my mom couldn't wait to get me out of the house, so she enrolled me in preschool at Rainbow Corners. I still get my balls broken for going there, but I knew uh, the kids were playing with their blocks and I had to get the hell out of there. So on Halloween, dressed as a pirate, I just I was like, I'm out of here, and ran out screaming, ah, I'm a pirate. To make matters worse, when I was three years old, I found out that I was born with a little hole in my heart, and that freaked me out 24-7 because I always thought I was going to die. So, I used to run around the house screaming, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I hate you, Mom, this is all your freaking fault. Ah! So one day, she locked me out of the house in my Superman underwear, and the neighbors had to call the police to make sure everything was okay, but you know what, it was super. By the time I reached first grade, I, I realized I had a different crazy kind of thought process than the normal kids. Because when the teacher was asking, hey, do you have any nicknames? Like, call me Rob instead of Robert. I raised my hand and said, you know what, you can call me Skip because I like to skip a lot and everybody laughed at me. By the age of 10, I realized I was becoming a fat kid because I was always hungry and at lunchtime I used to steal my friend's fruit by the foots and eat them before they could notice. Another time, I came home from school, went to get a snack and accidentally ate the entire jar of Flintstones vitamins and had to get my first experience with the hospital. The one person who really helped develop my eating skills early on was my grandmother because she always used to come over and just make me eat and eat and eat until I almost exploded but eventually I became a fat chubby kid who had to wear those husky pants with the elastic waistband and velcro shoes because I was too fat to bend over and tie regular shoes. When I got to middle school, I had no discipline goals or any focus whatsoever. I hated my teachers and got poor grades. When it came to losing, I was a terrible sore sport. Even got thrown out of a gym class at basketball game for asking the teacher if she was blind. Uh, when it came to video games, I have broken several controllers and I even ended up punching a hole through the wall and the hole's still there to this very day. The major low point for me in middle school was when I had to get braces and for any kid that age it's kind of a self-confidence issue but I decided to go through with it with a smile on my face. The only problem was when the orthodontist finally took him off he's like oh wait I screwed up and we gotta put him back on for the second time so I ended up ripping him out of my mouth but you know what it doesn't matter because I have a perfect smile anyway. In 7th grade I was actually playing football, I wasn't getting any playing time and I decided to quit and do something else with my life and the reason I stayed it for quitting was I didn't like wearing the football pants. I'll never forget the day when Coach Ponticelli came knocking at my door and he said, I'm starting my own team for the fat kids who didn't make weight. He pulled me aside and he said, listen, I see great potential in you. I see you doing great things in the future and quitting would be a big mistake. But by that point, my mind was already made up that I was going to quit. And Coach P said, you know what, I'm not going to let you. Just come to one practice, see how you like it, give it a go. And reluctantly, I said yes. Little did I know that going to that one practice would shape me into the man that I am today. In 8th grade, joining the Fat Boy team was the best decision of my life. I actually got to play, I had a blast, I was named the defensive captain, learned about goals, teamwork, leadership, and basically the sky was the limit. Even my grades started to turn around, I got all A's fourth quarter in my 8th grade season. Going into high school, my main focus and goals besides academics was playing varsity football. So at an early age, 9th grade freshman year, I started eating entire boxes of cereal out of giant mixing bowls, and I still do to this very day. Freshman year, I walked into the weight room for the first time, and instantly I knew this is the place where I belonged. I just thought it was amazing that you could see the results of your hard work and effort, and the kids who used to pick on me in 8th grade now kiss my ass because they didn't want to get their butt kicked. I was the typical jack meathead in high school. As a typical jack meathead, I was the crazy guy in my group of friends who would always do stuff for money. Uh, like one time we're sitting at lunch and they're like, we'll give you five bucks to eat all the pieces of gum off the bottom of the table. And I was like, sure, why not? I did it and I was like, hey, this is easy. What else you got? Coming from a small town, we'd always have to find crazy things to do on the weekend. So I used to take my 88 Oldsmobile Royale and go over jumps and smash the front fender. But I'm like, ah, this is crazy. But I was like, ah, this is awesome at the same time. Eventually I learned my lesson and that is not to peel out in a 15 year old car at a red light because you're going to blow the engine completely and then you have to push it home one mile. That sucked. So not having a car and still having the goal of playing varsity football, I had to ride my bike three miles to the gym every day and it really helped instill in me that if you want something bad enough, you're going to have to earn it. 
So in four years of playing football in high school, I came in at 186 pounds, a puny little freshman, and through hard work, determination, focus, and effort, my senior season, I was 240 pounds, I had started for three seasons, and I was named captain of the team and got recruited to play football in college. I got recruited to play for Fordham University in the Bronx, not the Florida freaking Gators. Uh, it's the same school Vince Lombardi went to. It was a 1AA football program. It was a great education in New York City, so I was like, hey, why not? The only problem was the coaches when I got there said I needed to gain 45 pounds and that I probably wouldn't see any playing time until my senior year. So what they did, they put me in a thing called Breakfast Club where I'd have to wake up at 7.30 every day and just eat and eat and eat. And if I didn't make my weight requirements, I had to do punishment workouts. Determined to gain that extra 45 pounds, I would go to White Castle on the weekends and house down Crave Cases like it was my job, which consisted of 30 White Castle hamburgers. Oh, so delicious. By my junior season, I had gotten up to 265 pounds. I wasn't the biggest, fastest, or strongest kid, but the coach decided to give me a shot, and I ended up starting on the offensive line every single game for the next two seasons. And it just went to show me that if you have a goal and you're focused and determined to achieve that goal and you never quit, anything is possible. After football, I tried my hand at becoming a bouncer at a local bar in a pretty rough neighborhood of the Bronx. The only problem was I sucked at it because I used to let everyone in, and when the police would come and raid the bar, they're like, oh, you're closed down for underage drinking. Back in the dorm rooms, I was still a typical Jack Meathead, and we used to do a thing called feats of strength to prove your manhood, and one time I was challenged to jump over three chairs blindfolded, but as I hit the third chair, I was like, oh my god, I bit the dust, blah, that was awesome. So I barely graduated from Fordham University in 2006 with a major in history and a minor in business. And at this time I was very depressed because I had no freaking clue what I wanted to do, where I was going, I had no direction, when all my friends were going to work on Wall Street. It was depressing. That all changed when I was sifting through job opportunities online and I read, do you want to sell the king of beers? I was like, hell yeah. I lived in New Jersey and the Budweiser job was in Brooklyn, New York City, but to me that didn't matter because I needed to start making money and I wanted to sell the king of beers. So I would, you know, ended up sitting in traffic every day driving to Brooklyn and sometimes it would take me two hours to get there. Coming from New Jersey, I realized pretty quickly that the drivers here drive like absolute maniac assholes and it drive me freaking crazy. I would sit in traffic two hours each way in the rain and snow and finally I was like, I've had enough! Inspired to start a new journey in life, I was like, New York City, see you later. I took my entire life savings, took all my earthly possessions and packed them into my car and just started driving west to see where I'd end up. Well, I drove until I couldn't drive anymore and landed in Los Angeles, California in a nice quaint little apartment near UCLA and basically if I had to wake up in the middle of the night and take a piss, I just had to roll over and the toilet was right there. I found a job merchandising, stocking shelves for Pepsi at minimum wage. It was awesome. I found out about this place called Tommy's Tacos near the UCLA campus and they have these things called dream fries which are basically an orgasm in your mouth. I used to go there and eat three platters of dream fries and then three burritos and I was like dude you gotta make this an eating challenge but the owner never did. So I went out and started looking for restaurants that did have eating challenges and the very first one I ever completed was the Fat Burger Triple XL challenge and from there I was like why don't I try the gallon milk challenge where you have one hour to drink a gallon of milk without getting sick. My friend Lee filmed it, I did it in 15 minutes, he threw it up on YouTube and that was the birth of the LA Beast. In the height of the recession in the United States in 2010, my minimum wage Pepsi job wasn't enough to pay the bills. So against what I wanted, I had to move back home to New Jersey with my parents. But you know what? They welcomed me with open arms, and so did my job with Budweiser. So in the start of 2011, I was back working at Budweiser, and as a weekend hobby, I was kind of making YouTube videos. You know, when I was sitting in traffic for two hours every day, instead of getting pissed off at the world, I was kind of daydreaming about what cool challenge I could do next and post to YouTube. From there, the floodgates opened and I started creating food challenges from any type of food I could find at the grocery store. I ended up borrowing this giant beer glass from work, which I've actually never returned. I drank 50 raw eggs from it. I attempted to break the butter-eating world record of 7 quarter pound sticks in 5 minutes. And I've even completed the cinnamon challenge without spitting it back up. Yeah, it was pretty tough. The one challenge that scared the shit out of me that my friends forced me to do was when I ate the ghost pepper, which at the time was the hottest pepper in the world. As I was preparing for the challenge, my friend came walking in the room dressed as Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, don't worry, I'll take care of you. 
So as I was sitting there crying like a little girl because it felt like someone had taken a blowtorch to my mouth, my friend came over dressed as Eeyore and kicked me right in the yam bags. And at that point in time, I was in the most pain I've ever been in my life, spitting fire, pieces of ghost pepper everywhere. It was insane. It was so insane that Ray William Johnson, who at the time had the number one YouTube channel, featured it on his show Equals 3, and the video garnered over 6 million views. From there, other networks started to use my clips in their shows. I've been on MTV, I've been on True TV, World's Dumbest, twice! I was voted World's Dumbest Man in 2012, and I was even on Tosh.0 twice, one time for slipping on a buttered kitchen floor and almost slicing my toe off completely. Oh, yeah. On Thanksgiving in 2011, I was contacted by my college football teammate who had seen me on YouTube and said that his company was sponsoring a professional competitive eating event. I was like, okay, well who would I be competing against? And he said, Eric Badlands Booker, who was 6'5", 400 pounds, and Sony the Black Widow Thomas, the 100 pound Asian woman who could out-eat any man. I came in dead last, but in 2012 I traveled all over the country, competing in cupcakes, eating pancakes, even hot dogs, and at my height I was ranked 17th ranked competitive eater in the world! At the start of 2013, I decided to take a break from competitive eating and just focus strictly on YouTube. I remember in 2007 seeing this guy smoke alcohol to get drunk, so I was like, damn, I gotta try myself. I went out, bought some alcohol, started smoking it, and in the process started a new nationwide trend of smoking alcohol. After the smoking alcohol video went viral, the very next video I posted on YouTube was of me drinking a 20 year old bottle of Crystal Pepsi that I bought off eBay for $80. It took me 5 seconds to chug it down and then 5 seconds later I was like blah, I came all back up all over my mother's brand new table in the basement, I was like hell yeah. The next day when I went to check the stats for the Crystal Pepsi video, it already had 300,000 views, I was like holy shit! And then three days after that, I realized I was front page news on the Toronto Star in Canada for smoking alcohol. I was like, no way, bro. With the momentum on my side, I knew in my heart that I had to chase my dreams. So I quit my job at Budweiser again and said goodbye to my parents, packed up my car with all my possessions. But this time I had a main goal and focus, and that was to build my YouTube fan base and to make everyone who watched my videos smile. I got to California for the second time, but this time I had that YouTube background that I worked so hard to build, and immediately new doors opened and opportunities presented themselves. And a week after I got to LA, I was on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno drinking raw eggs. From that point on, I decided to make YouTube my main goal and focus and basically I just try to stay as simple, creative and funny as possible and stay true to all the friends, family and supporters who've got me to this point and just keep them entertained and make them smile. When someone comes up to me and says I watched one of your videos and it made my day, that's what motivates me to continue to create. I've been through many peaks and valleys to get to this exact point in my life to where I am today and right now I'm staring up at a, a new mountain and a new chapter unknown in my life and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for all my friends and family and each and every single one of you who watch and support what I do each week. Uh, I owe it to you to move forward 110%. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love you and to absolutely stay tuned for what's to come.